Rab Mack here, also known as Radical Rabbi. And many of you know I'm the co-founder of and senior elder of Full Life Ministries International and overseer of its uh, member ministries. For some time I've been pondering a few things, and being a Torah-obedient believer in the Messiah, I have the distinct pleasure or displeasure, depending on the circumstances, being caught between mainstream Christianity and Messianic Judaism or Messianic Christianity. A position that unfortunately pits me against not only mainstream believers in both camps, but also against the fringe believers that have their own agenda uh, and tend to uh, ignore parts of Scripture, as do mainstream believers. Yet they forget that sometimes in-your-face confrontations become a stumbling block, not only to unbelievers, but believers as well. If I'm working in a gang neighborhood, one-on-one with a gangbanger or a biker, this tactic might be fruitful but only with prayerful consideration. But with Susie Homemaker or Joe Stockbroker, all I'm going to do is put a great big stumbling block in their path. They won't listen to me. Anything I say will fall on deaf ears. I may even cause someone to question their faith if they were not well grounded. And this might be something I'm not quite ready to stand before Hashem and explain. In Matthew 12, 36 and 37, you know, it it tells us very, very succinctly. It says, moreover, I tell you this day, on the day of judgment, people will have, have to give account for every careless word that they have spoken. For by your own words will you be acquitted, and by your own words will you be condemned. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, is supposed to be our example, our guide, if you will. We are to follow his footsteps and his example. He followed Peshat Torah, that's literal Torah. He even observed some of the traditional times, such as Hanukkah. And granted, when people turned the temple into a flea market, if you will, he uh, he did display righteous indignation. But we have to make a conscious choice to follow and obey God, to act as he acted, and not with 24-7 righteous indignation, but with love and grace. And nowhere in all of Scripture... In the, in the apostolic writings, or the New Testament, which you, what, if you want to call it, do we see shock and awe tactics or hate being showered, shown towards believers or non-believers? We see grace and tact and love being shown. Many of us, myself included, have attacked back in a defensive manner when we were attacked. We reacted instead of prayerfully acting as Jesus, Yeshua, would have us do. I have gotten to where I detest being around people this time of year. Because both sides of the fence seem to go just absolutely crazy. Messianics begin insulting mainstream believers for having a Christmas tree or celebrating the birth of Christ, even though the majority of them know that he was not born on December 25th, or that the cross found in many mainstream Christian churches was an execution stake and that Christians are still killing the Messiah and putting him back on the stake, or other such complaint. Yet, all the same, There are those who immediately forget that those same people that they're attacking with hateful comments, calling them Satan worshipers, or that they're worshiping Asheroth, or that they're idolaters, are truly believers and worshiping the God of Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov, the God of Israel, Yeshua, and never even uttered a single word of worship to Asheroth or Ishtar or Hasatan. It does not stop there. Once someone has been assaulted, or and and they, as they put put it, uh, informed of their uh, transgression concerning the Asheroth poll, um, the harassment is stepped up, calling them directly or indirectly heathens or pagans or Satanists, and that they're going to hell because of their observance of Christmas or Asheroth or even a golden calf, etc. I've seen even worse, or similar tactics. And, and hate speech used towards believers over Easter under the guise of informing them of Ishtar worship. Now, if those were not enough to cause stumbling blocks to believers or unbelievers alike, there are those, in my humble opinion, that skirt the fringe, that are anti-Zion and anti-Israel. Like I said, I've seen worse, and it goes, gets on, it, and it continues. They're basically nothing more than rep- replacement theologians that, as they reject Eretz Israel as God's chosen, and they consider believers Jewish and non-Jewish as Israel with no consideration for those in the land of Israel, no consideration for the Hebrew. There's the other topic of the Magen David, or the Star of David, and its history. 
There are those who literally hate it because, in their opinion, it's satanic, just because it was used by pagan groups in history. Though in 1897 and 98, the Zionism movement, uh, the Jewish people whose goal was to return to their biblical home, chose the Magan David as their symbol. Two interlocking triangles. And when Israel became a nation, that symbol was adopted as their national flag, a blue Magan David between two bands of blue on a white background. Or accusations by fringe and mainstream Christians that we, and I mean Torah obedient believers, are practicing salvation by works just because we observe biblical feasts. We keep Shabbat. We don't eat foods that God told us we're not, you know, in Scripture not to eat. Or that we're heretics if we do not celebrate the birth of Christ on December 25th because it's a holy day, in their opinion. Or because we observe Pesach or Passover instead of focusing on Easter. Even though we do recognize the resurrection of the Messiah during Pesach as well as on Resurrection Sunday. And that we observe a Shabbat instead of a Sunday worship schedule. For those of you who consider yourselves well-read and scholars, are you aware of Christmas and the secular Easter and even some of the doctrinal versions of Easter? Uh, Hanukkah, etc. These are all traditional holidays. None of them are biblically mandated, holy days or appointed times. So what's the big deal over a tradition? It can't save. For all of you out there who want to use these top topics as scare tactics to scare the hell out of people in order to get them to see things your way or tell them that it doesn't, to, uh, you know, let me let me tell you something. It doesn't work when you use scripture as a weapon spreading curses towards those who are saved but do not agree with you, it's hate speech, pure and simple. When you assault, attack, demean, defame, slander anyone, their belief or their basic faith, it means by means of shock and awe or by means of hateful speech or in some cases by sheer, sheer meanness, it becomes Lashon Hara. It becomes evil speech. It's hate speech. When we use hate, deception, shock and awe, or out-and-out out incorrect information or pieces of information out of context to tell people about the origins of a tradition or a belief instead of uh, an organized, contextual, respectful teaching or dialogue, then it is Lashon Hara. It is a sin. In this world of feel-good, anything-goes theology and forced acceptance of non-biblical values or heresies, these shock and awe tactics do not work. They are nothing more than a stumbling block in a wall of partition. They don't work with me, and I know for a fact they won't work on most others. They do nothing more than drive a wedge between the believer and the unbeliever, and those who are not grounded in, the, in their faith, it becomes a stumbling block. How can we show the love of the Messiah when we are constantly driving a wedge between a person and their faith? While all of these issues I've described so far are important, and when presented properly can help a person in their walk, but none of it is salvific. Not one single point about a Christmas tree, or the Star of David, or the Asherah pole, or anything else, has anything to do with salvation. But when it's used as a hate tactic, as the shock and awe postings are nothing more than, it's a stumbling stone, it's sin, it's Lashon Hara. For the saved it becomes a wall of partition, for the unsaved it can, and in some cases will turn them from God. God, and, and they'll even avoid the things of God. New believers can, and in many cases, question their faith and walk away, because they think they have done something so wrong that God will condemn them to hell. So when does our self-centered desires and beliefs replace the teachings and desires of the Most High? When did traditions become more important than salvation? When did we get so insensitive that that when we spew hate and discontent in the name of Yeshua or Jesus, that we follow it up with, I don't care what anybody thinks. Or if, if you don't like it, if you don't like my opinion, unfriend me. Hmm. What fruit is this showing? What will others see of your fruit? Will they see the grace and mercy of Yeshua or will they see you? Personally, I'd rather they see Yeshua than me. Now, if this rant is bothering you, good, you need to be bothered because the events leading up to it bothered me. You know, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the, the gospel of the Devere Emet of Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm not ashamed of Eretz Israel or the, the land of Israel. And I am a very unashamedly a Zionist. I believe that the biblical deed to the Hebrews of the land of Israel is forever. 
I believe that the Hebrews, or Jews, if you will, will come to the saving grace of the Messiah, as will legions of Goyim, or nations. I believe that the Magen David, the shield of David that was chosen in the 1800s to be the symbol of Eretz Israel, is the current seal and representation of Israel, and not some stupid satanic symbol, since those who made Aliyah worship the God, and by the way, Aliyah means return, um, they worship the God of Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov, or Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I believe that when a person is saved by acknowledging Yeshua, or Jesus, as Lord and Savior, and repent of their sins, they become grafted into B'nai Israel, or they become children of Israel, whether they're born a Goyim, a Gentile, or born a Hebrew, or a Jew. They become a child of God. If someone wishes me a Merry Christmas, folks, I'm going to respond in kind. If they wish me Happy Hanukkah, I'll respond in kind. And with both of them, I'm going to add, God bless, or you be blessed. Because you know what? I truly do wish that God blesses all believers, no matter what flavor they are. If someone asks me why I celebrate a holiday or a holy day, I use that time to share the gospel of Yeshua with them. I use that time to show them the grace and mercy that he showed me when all I was was a hateful, mean bully that didn't like anyone. Yet he showed me grace and mercy time and time again. And you know what, folks? He didn't ask me what I ate. He didn't ask me what day I worshipped. He didn't ask me if I was a Jew or a Gentile, or Hebrew or a Goy. He didn't ask me if I had a Christmas tree or celebrated Christmas. He didn't ask me any of those things. He asked that I believe in him and repent of my sins and that I follow him. And then he charged me with this. He said, go into all the world and share the gospel that Devray met with every creature. And by that he meant every unsaved person. And that is what I do. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 10.9 and 10, it says that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Revelation 3.20 it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, that's what counts. That's what is important above all else. This is where our focus should be. Nowhere in there does it say anything about you can't celebrate Christmas or observe Christmas or you have to observe this or you have to observe that. What it says is very simply that if you want salvation, the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. If you have an issue with this, then my advice to you is you take it up with God. Don't spread hate and discontent because it does not fit your theology. When you become a stumbling block or you are so angry that all you want to do is show others what they are doing wrong, then you need to consider this. In Matthew 5, 22 through 24, it says, But I tell you that anyone who nurses anger against his brother will be subject to judgment. That whosoever calls his brother you good for nothing will be brought before the Sanhedrin, or the court. That whosoever says fool incurs the penalty of burning in the fire of Gehenna. So that if you are offering your gift at the temple altar, and you remember that there that your brother has something against you, leave your gift where it is, by the altar, and go and make peace with your brother. Then come back and offer your gift. Folks, if you're holding something out, if you have some kind of urge or you've got some kind of uh, problem with your brother or your sister or they with you, before you get down in prayer and start asking God to help you, you need to go clean up your your yard. You need to take the moat out of your own eye. Get with your brother and say, help me with this. Help me get this, this log out of my eye and I'll help you with yours. And then you can both go to the altar and ask God for forgiveness and help. I don't say these things to intentionally cause trouble, but to clarify where I am and that I will no longer participate in the hateful conversations of those who choose to cause service or trouble. To those of you who celebrate Christ this season, Merry Christmas. Those of you that celebrate the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah, Chag Sameach Hanukkah. And I pray that you all will consider becoming a bridge to the Messiah for all you meet. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord shine his face to you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give to you peace. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace.
Amen.